Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining today's webinar. Um, today we are discussing all things about our upcoming event, the Buyer World Congress on Industrial Biotechnology, uh, heading to Des Moines, Iowa for the very first time this July 8th to the 11th. Uh, today we'll be discussing all things about the programming and partnering. Um, I'm going to kick us off. My name is Katrina Daiga. I am from the Bio Marketing team, um, so I am the Events Marketing Manager for the Bio World Congress. And I am joined today by some of my colleagues here. On the line we have Stephanie Batchelor, Managing Director of the Bio Industrial and Environmental Section. Don Atkins, for Senior Manager from our Food and Agriculture Section. And Jesse Armstrong, um, our uh, Bio Partnering Operations Manager, who will walk us through all of the partnering tutorials, tips and tricks later on in the webinar. So I'd just like to run through a quick uh, brief agenda of what we'll be discussing today. So I will kick us off walking through all things new and exciting for this year um, at the Buyer World Congress, uh, followed by a program snap snapshot uh, with touching on some of the new and exciting sessions, speakers, and companies we have planned for this, this year. And then Jesse will walk us through uh, a partnering tutorial overview uh, and best practices. And then we will end today with an opportunity for questions from the uh, conference team here on the line. So we are so excited to host the event in Des Moines this year for the very first time. Um, Iowa and the Midwest region are home to many of the companies, universities, and research facilities that are at the forefront of biotechnology innovation. Um, so what I have here is just a snapshot of our attendees that we see year over year. So uh, around 900 to 1,000 attendees gather from over 500 different companies. Um, we usually see around 40 different countries uh, represented at the event. And here is a snapshot of the management role and the areas of focus from our attendees. So we are predominantly C-level, director, vice president, um, government officials, foreign ministers uh, from a variety of focuses. Um, so here's just a snapshot from, from business development to marketing and sales, research, and we also have a large investor community that gathers each year at the event. Um, so a a diverse gathering. Uh, so the Buyer World Congress is truly a global event. Year over year we see delegations from around the world. Um, and here I have a snapshot of some of our largest representations. Um, and 40% of all of our attendees are international. So we do our best here at Bio to engage and reach out to ensure that um, we have truly an international representation at the event. Um, so now I'd like to just discuss a bit about our exciting education program this year. So the Buyer World Congress, uh, in addition to networking and partnering opportunity, we also have a number of education sessions and presentations. Um, so this is a snapshot of um, the different types of programming you'll see this year. So we've made some exciting additions to the program, um, and I'll dive more into that later on in the webinar. But uh, just kind of an overview, we have concurrent breakout session panels all, year, all uh, week long. We have specialty workshops, startup stadium presentations, our larger plenary sessions, um, as well as shorter company and technical presentations that are happening um, each day. So there is tons to explore and discover uh, all through the week. So now I'd like to hand it over to Stephanie Batchelor, who will walk us through our education tracks and themes this year. Um, so, Stephanie, I will hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. We are so excited to be heading to Des Moines, Iowa. We have a really great program shaping up for all of you. So just wanted to focus a little bit on our tracks. We have shifted the names of uh, some tracks that are very familiar to you. We've added a couple new uh, this year. So. Just wanted to walk quickly through, um, you know, in renewable chemicals for a sustainable planet, um, some really interesting companies participating from Green Yug to PNG to Genomatica to Estee Lauder, looking at topics ranging from cosmetics and personal care to um, plastics and recyclability, 
um, and, and ethanol to uh, renewable chemicals and just some really interesting conversations there. Um, we also have uh, Transforming Global Markets, uh, some, some great participation from companies like Crota, Brascam, Arzeda, Verdamas, um, you know, really spanning the conversation from how synthetic biology is contributing to the bio-based economy, um, you know, building blocks for chemicals, meeting global demand for fuels, chemicals, and ag products, and more. Um, we also have, so new this year, is a track called Ingredients for a Healthier Tomorrow, and that's going to span topics from hemp and the potential for hemp in the bio-based economy to algae and increasing algae production to alternative proteins, and we'll hear from companies like New West Genetics and Spiro Foods and New Age Meats and Qualitas and, and more. So really, really interesting sessions there. Uh, certainly well familiar with the new frontiers in bioenergy. That's a bit code word for biofuels and biorefining. So hoping to hear from uh, some traditional companies in the space there, everyone from DSM to Praj to Clariant, um, ADM, Poet, and more. Uh, certainly looking at 2G feedstocks, looking at optimizing biorefinery plants, uh, and then also exploring aviation biofuels and low carbon fuel standards and um, companies again from Givo to Rheumatics um, all the way down the chain. Uh, and then we have a new track this year which is a sustainability in the future of food and we've also shifted a bit our advances in genome editing and genomics to include some um, exciting new participation. Um, certainly synthetic biology as we have seen historically, but also some, um, some interesting new topics. So I wanted to turn it over to Don Atkins from our food and agriculture team to talk a little more about those sessions. Don? Thank you, Stephanie. Good afternoon, all. My name is Don Atkins. Um, I wanted to take just a couple moments to highlight some of the new parts of our programming this year. Um, and I sort of start by noting that we're really working to bring together not only the technology developers and investors, but also the value chain and stakeholder groups who will be buying or using the products that you're developing, uh, as well as the influential stakeholders who have some shared values around solving problems in food and agricultural systems. And we're really hoping to elevate those dialogues to advance some of the policy conversations that will ultimately enable a more robust funding ecosystem for your businesses to succeed in capital raising and long-term growth. So that really informed how we were looking at the programming this year. Um, within our sustainability and the future of food track, um, we will be talking about the broader innovation story around UN Sustainable Development Goals, nutrition, health, and wellness, um, trade issues, and how those are impacted by emerging technologies, um, as well as consumer trust, um, technology access, um, issues in the ag economy today, soil health and food waste, just to name a few topics. We'll have speakers from Benson Hill, National Corn Growers Association, Environmental Defense Fund, Aquabounty Technologies, WebMD, and more soon to be announced. Um, I wanted to then talk a little bit about our Wednesday programming in Advances in Genome Editing and Genomics. Um, this program will discuss, discuss a number of different topics, but we're excited to feature some participating organizations, including Corteva, uh, the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture, Iowa State University, the International Food Information Council, um, Lanza Tech, Teselogen, Arzeda, and Joint Genome Institute, as well as Tropic Bioscience uh, and Successful Farming. So bringing in a lot of di different and diverse perspectives to talk about these issues. I'll turn it over back to Stephanie to talk about some more of our programming at the event. Great. Thanks so much, Don. So we have a few uh, really exciting plenaries for you guys this year. Um, we are kicking off with the New Food Revolution, um, which will be a conversation about how there's, there's so much dialogue around the food space and the importance of innovating in that universe. So we're going to have a conversation with some ag developers, some new and novel ingredient producers, and our downstream partners. Um, from retailers to buyers 
about how this disruption is, is going to change the world of food. So um, confirmed and also invited speakers in that space, uh, everywhere from Triton Algae to Energy Ventures to, again, some of the retailers who, who would purchase that food. And then um, Wednesday morning, we'll kick it off with our award presentations. Um, so we'll have some more about that in the next couple of weeks as to who those award winners are for the George Washington Carver and Rosalind Franklin Award. But that will be, that conversation will be spearheaded by uh, the fearless Jim Lane. And then for the Wednesday lunch plenary, uh, investing in a bio-based future, uh, really working with um, Cargill to focus on sustainability and how that plays a role in biotech's value proposition. So looking at how sustainability is viewed by the farming community, what it means to have an interconnected supply chain, and of course how sustainable sourcing is, is valued by consumer product good companies, um, certainly leading to things like market signals and, and um, other drivers for the commercialization of bio-based products specifically. So um, Marty Munsmeyer from Cargill will be moderating that conversation. Participants will include uh, Tim Venverlo from the United Soybean Board, Franklin Holly from the Keystone Policy Center, um, as well as uh, participants from Avantium and, and a couple of our consumer product goods companies. And that will wrap up the plenary program. So Katrina, why don't I turn it back over to you? Uh, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not certain if we have flagged our super sessions here. Are you going to go over that as well later, Katrina? Um, yes, yeah, so we'll touch a bit on Perfect. some of our super sessions later in the presentation, um, but now I'd like to move into highlighting a, a new programming opportunity at Royal Congress this year. Um, so we will be, for the first time, offering bioeconomy site tours. Um, so these are opportunities for attendees to explore innovation uh, locally. So we have um, four tour options on Monday as well as Thursday of the event. Uh, so we'll be offering tours of Iowa State University, Corteva and Bayer, Cargill and uh, REG from uh, the laboratories and also uh, just a hands-on look inside of the, the work being done. So I wanted to uh, point out there is a deadline to register for the tour option. So if, please, you could register by June 1st to confirm your uh, space on the tour. Uh, for more details and, and information about what each entails, uh, all of the uh, details are on the website. Um, so if you could take a look after the presentation. I'd also like to touch on a new program opportunity that we'll be offering this year uh, called Startup Stadium. So this is a new programming offering that uh, allows startup companies from emerging bio-based companies to participate, to compete against each other in front of a panel of judges. Um, so we are still accepting applications until May 10th, tomorrow, end of day, midnight. Um, so if you want to learn more or submit an application before the deadline, uh, please go to the website. And here is a snapshot of our featured judges this year. So our judges are a collection from the public and private sectors with collective experience in early stage investing, entrepreneurship, um, the startup landscape, as well as industrial biotech space. So they will be evaluating the applicants and the finalists. Um, I just wanted to touch on our awards this year, which will be a one-year membership to bio, as well as a one-hour advisory discussion with venture capital firms, um, Emerald Technology Ventures and Prairie Crest Capital. So lots of exciting things. Um, if you're interested in participating, please visit our website to submit an application or learn more. Uh, another presentation opportunity to get exposure at the event and, in turn, uh, confirm more partnering meetings. We'll be offering company and technical presentations again this year at the event. Um, our application deadline is May 10th, tomorrow, um, at the end of the day. But these are shorter 15-minute presentations that include an introduction as well as Q&A with the audience. Um, so these are an opportunity to showcase technology development, process improvements, product pipeline, 
um, R&D activities or, or other technologies and, and shorter presentations, and they will be offered um, throughout the week as well. So for more details and information on that, please visit our website. And then, Stephanie, did you want to talk a bit about our exhibition this year? Sure, happy to. We've got um, a lot of buzz on the floor, including the BioBuzz Center. <laughs> um, so we're excited for our exhibitors. We have several uh, international pavilions this year. We have a number of our regional partners and several companies. So we are expecting a really robust exhibit floor. Um, you know, Jesse will, will talk about all of the partnering opportunities. So, of course, all the partnering happens in the exhibit space, but um, we also are going to have a number of international and regional conversations down there along with the BioBuzz Center where we'll be conducting interviews with some of the companies and, and tying that into our media and communications efforts and, um, of course, all the bio team as well. So, very excited to see you all down at the exhibit floor. Katrina, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Um, so I also just wanted to give a snapshot of some of our sponsors that we have confirmed this year. To, so for those of you that are on the call, on the webinar this afternoon, thank you all for your participation. Um, we're super excited. So here's just sort of a, a look into where we are. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over to Jesse Armstrong from our partnering team who will walk us through um, all things partnering. So Jesse, uh, take it away. All righty. Thanks so much, Katrina. Okay. So what is partnering? Partnering uh, meetings are 30-minute meetings. Uh, they are business to business, and they take place on site at the conference. Uh, meetings take place in a dedicated section in the exhibit hall, um, and they all have their own dedicated private meeting booth. Uh, meetings are officially uh, arranged through the one-on-one -on -one partnering system, and I will elaborate on this more later. Um, but for now, know that BIO schedules your meetings for you as, a, as opposed to you uh, scheduling your uh, own meetings on your own. Um, so that just eliminates the guesswork and allows you to arrive on site with a set schedule. And the partnering system is now open, so registered attendees can now log in to the system and begin the process of identifying potential partners. Okay, so partnering is essentially your one-stop shop. Uh, you can manage your company's branding and offerings uh, through your company profile. And in addition to sending and accepting meeting requests, you can view and add programming items uh, to your schedule and essentially fit your uh, partnering meetings around the um, concurrent programming schedule. Uh, you can also take advantage of our mobile-friendly features. This includes our mobile app, as well as our system's uh, integration with Outlook, Gmail, iCal. Um, so this will allow you to quickly view your schedule on the go. Okay, so with that said, um, let's go ahead and dive into what the partnering system actually looks like and what you can do with it. All right, starting um, when you when you first log in, you'll see the home page. This is fairly uh, straightforward. At the top of the home page, you have the different uh, main sections you can navigate to. You have all of your uh, colleagues' delegate profiles immediately viewable. Um, and these are all housed under your central company profile. Um, you can each upload your uh, headshot. You can um, add your job title. And um, additionally, you can view from the get-go what your calendar availability is. Um, I will um, explain this in more detail later, but for now know that if you have zero time slots, you will be unable to send requests uh, send a request, meetings, or um, be a listed participant on them. Um, additionally, do not forget this section. Um, it's very important. It includes uh, detailed tutorials as well as our customer service information. 
All right, so the next step after logging in is you're going to want to add information and review your company profile. If you've attended a previous event, we will have imported that profile for you, so make sure to make the necessary updates. Your profile is uh, published by default. You can always unpublish it if you uh, need to make some important updates and are not ready to share that yet. However, we encourage you to publish it as soon as possible. That way you will be visible in the search section to others. A few things you will uh, want to do, make sure that you include, uh, you'll want to make sure you include your company, uh, company type, your brief description, uh, your logo. Make sure to not upload your own headshot here. For your company profile, you, you'll want to make sure it's your company logo. Um, these items are all immediately visible in the search section to others, so those are the key areas you'll at least want to include initially. Uh, also interesting is you can um, upload your own uh, documents, you can embed videos, and basically this section right here is where you can, can include any other media or documents that you think are relevant for your company. And Last but not least, uh, make sure to include as much information as possible. This will just make you more visible in the search section and it will make it easier for other companies to identify you. On that note, there's a few other key demographic areas that you'll want to include in your profile. Uh, there is your areas of interest. Um, this is an interesting section. We've actually added quite a handful of new categories this year uh, related to the food and agricultural cultural sections. This will just make it a bit easier for our participating companies to identify themselves and characterize themselves. Uh, company size is also important. This is something people often target their search on. Uh, do include your company website. That will immediately pop up in the search results. And uh, country is another uh, area that people uh, conduct their search by. Next step, you are going to want to update your calendar. As I mentioned earlier, all time slots are unavailable by default. So you'll want to go in and make sure you indicate when you can take meetings. Know that any meeting, any time slot that you indicate is available, that will be fair game for meeting scheduling. Uh, we schedule meetings on the basis of mutual availability. So we look at your calendar and the other company's calendar and pick a uh, overarching matching time slot and uh, schedule the meeting based off of that. Also important is the sessions and education topic section. This is where you can do all the programming taking place at the conference, add that to your calendar, and kind of mold your programming schedule and your um, partnering meeting schedule around each other. Next is the search section. This is essentially a database of all companies participating in partnering. You can, at the top, uh, conduct a basic tech search. There is also the advanced search. This is helpful if you have a handful of specific search parameters uh, and you can do one filter or multiple filters and essentially create a customized search to help you identify certain companies. And you can also uh, export your results into Excel. Sometimes this is an easier format for people to work with. You can also share that with colleagues internally. And lastly, this is also where you will send uh, meeting requests to potential partners. Lastly is your message center. This is where you will uh, manage all your meeting activity. This is on a company level, meaning all delegates in your company profile will see the same message center. You can add um, and remove each other from meetings. So know that multiple people or just one person from your company can be a part of a meeting. That's kind of up to you. You can uh, search your message center by various meeting statuses. You can do a quick uh, text search, you can filter by incoming versus outgoing. Um, one big takeaway here is that BIOS sch schedules your meetings for you, as I mentioned earlier, so you'll just want to make sure that your calendar is up to date. 
And then once you have an accepted meeting, SIO will schedule that for you um, on the basis of mutual availability. So you don't have to worry too much about finding a specific time. Um, so long as you have mutual availability, the meeting will be scheduled and we will uh, begin the process of scheduling accepted meetings with availability uh, two weeks before the event. If that time, sorry, if that time does not work for you, there's always the option to reschedule the uh, meeting. Um, another note is that we encourage you to do this all through the system. So communicate with other companies through the system as opposed to doing this by email. Um, oftentimes we get questions about how can I book a meeting space and we say essentially just book your, send meeting requests through this message center and your scheduled meetings will be assigned to a location. And on the topic of mutual availability, um, meetings that don't have, requests that don't have mutual availability obviously cannot be scheduled. You'll see this red indicator right here. Um, the solution to this is to just open up as much mutual availability as possible in your calendar. So open up more time slots. Um, it, you, it could be you, that's the bottleneck. It could be the other company. It could be mo both of you. So the more time slots you have open in your calendar, the better. If you do open up uh, more time slots and the uh, meeting becomes available, this red indicator will disappear. Uh, quickly, here is an uh, overview of the partnering hours. Partnering kicks off on Monday, July 8th in the afternoon. Um, so if you'd like to make the most of your experience, do plan to arrive in Des Moines on Sunday or Monday. Alrighty, here are a few best practices. As mentioned earlier, uh, fill out your company profile with as much information as possible so that it's easy for other companies to find you. Uh, get a head start by sending your request early. Um, also, instead of sending generic template messages, uh, do spend some time creating customized tailored requests that demonstrate not only your company's offerings, but also how they will appeal, um, appeal to other companies. And also, if it's been a while since you sent a request and you're still uh, waiting to hear back, you can always use the reply only feature that's available on um, every meeting request. And this will bring the request back up to the top of the other company's message center. Um, additionally, do be sure to regularly check for new companies in the search section. Uh, new companies register and are added daily. Um, and also, while we encourage you to start sending requests early, there's also um, really no need to panic if it does take some time to hear uh, a response. Meeting activity actually really truly begins to accelerate the week or two before the event, and that trend often continues on site. Um, so this is really just a high-level overview, overview of some of the best practices, but we will also circulate a more detailed slide deck uh, with more pointers and suggestions after the webinar. And lastly, here is our um, customer service information. We'll also be taking uh, questions at the end of the webinar, but um, know that you can always contact us uh, through uh, email or by phone, and um, also just as a general note, you will typically receive your login credentials within one to three business days after registering, and you will receive a confirmation email from biopartnering at bio.org. And with that, I will go ahead and hand this back over to Katrina. Thank you so much, Jesse, for that great tutorial. So as she mentioned, we will be accepting questions at the end of the webinar for um, any uh, questions you guys may have about the partnering system. Um, I just wanted to go through a, a snapshot of the schedule for the event. So as you know, it starts on Monday, 
July 8th, and we go all week until Thursday, July 11th. Um, so if you're planning on attending one of our awesome bioeconomy tours, uh, please do plan to arrive in Des Moines on Sunday as our very first tour kicks off at 8 a.m. on Monday morning. Um, and our last tour will go until around uh, 4.30 p.m. on Thursday evening. So uh, we advise if you'd like to maximize your time at the event to arrive on Sunday and stay until Friday um, if possible. So as you can see, all week long we have education, exhibits, partnering meetings, um, exciting receptions, and also tours. Uh, in addition to all of the, the partnering sessions um, and workshops happening, we also have a number of networking receptions planned for attendees this year. So we will be kicking off with our Women in Industrial Biotech reception, um, which is RSVP only, so more to come. Um, Monday, we'll have our exciting welcome reception at the Iowa Event Center. Uh, and Tuesday, we are super excited to host our uh, networking reception at the World Class Museum, the World Food Prize Hall. Um, so if you're not familiar with this, it's a historical landmark in Des Moines. Um, it's a world-class museum uh, recognizing great achievements in agriculture and also fighting hunger. Um, so attendees will get to explore the interactive displays in the museum while enjoying drinks uh, and snacks. And Wednesday, we will also be having our business partnering reception for uh, networking and also exploring all of the great innovation uh, in the exhibit hall. So uh, just some, some key reminders as you're planning your travel and getting ready to make your journey to Des Moines, um, I wanted to remind you of our discounted bio housing block. Uh, so uh, bio has reserved blocks of rooms in these three brand new hotels in downtown Des Moines um, within walking distance to the Iowa Event Center. Um, so uh, please make sure you book your housing before our deadline of Monday, June 17th to ensure that you lock in our lowest rates. Um, and if you're not subscribed to our email uh, list, you can do so on the website and we send reminders and information um, to keep you ahead of the planning schedule. So all of that is available online. Uh, so just some key dates and, and takeaways uh, for the event over the next few months. So uh, registration is now open. So if you could visit the website to complete your registration, our early bird discounted rates end on June 12th. Um, and as Jesse mentioned during the partnering uh, demo, once you register for the event, you will receive your partnering login within three, one to three business days. Um, so it's important to register early as the biopartnering system is now open. So you can log in and start exploring companies um, and uh, folks attending the event to start requesting meetings. Um, so we find that uh, if you send your meeting requests early, they are more likely to be accepted and then you can get in uh, with the companies that you're looking to meet at the event. Um, as a reminder, the housing block closes on June 17th. Uh, so please make sure you, you book before then, and then we will begin scheduling our partnering meetings. Um, so for your for accepted meetings, Bio does all of the work for you, so we will schedule them before you arrive in Des Moines. Um, that will start on June 24th. Uh, and if you have any other questions about the programming, um, and also please check the website often as we are continuing to confirm uh, sessions and speakers and rolling out exciting event announcements. Um, you can subscribe to our uh, event announcements list on the website or check back often for updates. So now I'd like to move into an opportunity for folks uh, on the webinar here to ask some questions for our team, whether it's about programming, partnering, or scheduling. Um, we're here to help you uh, with whatever questions you may have. So at this time, if you could please enter in uh, any questions into the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel, and we are happy to answer. Thank you. So I will go ahead and get started with the questions. So we have one here. Um, you mentioned a super session programming. Can you please talk a bit more about that? Um, so I will hand that over to Stephanie Batchelor to talk through some of the exciting super sessions we have planned. As they've just come together, and we're announcing them on the website. So Stephanie, did you could you talk a little bit more about um, these exciting new programming? 
Yeah, absolutely. So super sessions, which is uh, kind of our, our internal uh, word here at BIO for these programs, are new to the World Congress this year. So they'll be taking place on Thursday morning. We'll have three of them. Um, they're a bit like a mini plenary in a way, and they are our only dedicated programming on Thursday before all of the um, company uh, site visits kick off. So topics will range. Uh, FluidQuip um, is sponsoring a session looking at building blocks for renewable chemicals. Um, we have also a session um, organized by Vesteron, which is going to look at topics in biopesticides. And then we're also working on a third topic with SynBioBeta, um, looking really at innovations in synthetic biology and um, new technologies that are helping to drive investment into the Midwest. Um, so we should have some really interesting conversations there. And again, those super sessions are planned for uh, Thursday morning. Nice way to kick off your day before you go sit on a bus for an hour. So uh, Katrina, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, I actually have one partnering question here now. The question is, what if I have multiple people from my company attending? Do we each get our, partner, our own partnering profile? Um, so building off of what I mentioned earlier, um, company, your, your partnering profile um, effectively functions on a company level initially. So you have your company profile. Within the company profile, um, there are all your individual delegate profiles. But um, essentially what you can do is you can log in as yourself and you can manage your own individual meeting activity and or you can manage your uh, delegates, as, uh, sorry, your colleagues as well, and they can do the same for you. Um, also, company, your meeting requests are initially sent on a company-to-company -company level basis. So you are sending a meeting request to the other company. And then from there, the company who's receiving the request, they can decide which individual delegates um, will be on the request. But um, Essentially, you do function as an individual, but um, at the end of the day, it all is on a company level, and you can manage your colleagues' activity as well as your own. Okay, so it looks like there are no other questions. Um, so again, uh, everything is available on the website. As programming and speakers are confirmed, um, we will continue to post online and send out our email announcements. Um, so the recording will be available after the presentation. So we will follow up with the slides um, as well as the recording next week. So thank you all very much for attending. Um, and we look forward to seeing you in Des Moines. And just one reminder, if you have any other partnering questions, feel free to contact us at biopartnering at bio.org. Thank you very much and have a great day.